hello good morning to all of you so today we are going to discuss about the central concepts of chemistry that is called the potential energy surface okay so uh, actually the molecules actually has a specific geometry and energy in its uh, minimum uh, or its stable form but during the progress of reactions it uh, deformed from its initial structure and the energy also changes okay and the spatial uh, uh, orientation spatial orientation uh, that is geometry of a system can alter uh, through different degrees of freedom that is uh, translation rotation or vibration but if uh, there is uh, no external fields or influence then what will happen that during translational or rotation the energy of the molecules will not change so the energy of the molecules can only changes through its vibrational degrees of freedom that is through 3n minus 5 for linear or 3n minus 6 for nonlinear uh, os okay where n is the number of atoms so the relationship between the energy of a molecule and its associated geometry is called actually the potential energy surface okay so the graphical uh, plot of this uh, relationship can be two dimensional if only one variable is there means there one degrees of freedom and it can be up to 3n minus 4 to 3n minus 5 dimensional if there is uh, n number of atoms are there so molecules uh, the concepts behind this potential energy surface is actually uh, coming from the born oppenheimer approximations that states nuclei are actually fixed compared to the electrons because of very high uh, masses okay so during the changes of nuclear positions electrons uh, reorient themselves in instantaneously so basically we what we can define of geometry of the molecule that is the geometry of the nuclear coordinates of the molecule so we can uh, redefine the potential energy surface as it's the plot of energy versus its nuclear coordinates okay so let's uh, see an example so let's assume there uh, is a, a diatomic molecule and here we have expressed is a ball and spring model and ball is actually defines the atom and spring is the bond so you know when uh, the spring will uh, have its the actual length means the equilibrium length the energy of this uh, molecule is minimum but if you squeeze the spring or if you uh, stretch the spring in both the way the energy will be increasing okay so let's if we uh, plot this type of uh, potential energy surface for diatomic molecule we can get this type of plot where uh, here the R equilibrium that is defined that's the equilibrium bond length here we have shown for hydrogen atom a hydrogen molecule so at the equilibrium bond length the energy of the systems or hydrogen molecule will be minimum and if we strength uh, if we stretch the uh, bond then it, the energy will be rising and also in this way if we uh, squeeze the bond or if we uh, uh, decrease the bond length then also it will be rise so this is schematic potential energy surface for a diatomic molecule and this is a two dimensional potential energy surface because this is only the plot of energy versus the reaction coordinate where the bond length is here the reaction coordinate so there are so many things we can understand from this potential energy surface for example the potential energy increases either the bond length is increased or decreased so we will get the equilibrium geometry is the most stable geometry the potential energy uh, at equilibrium bond length has been considered as zero energy for the potential system and we uh, uh, plot accordingly the energy of the other system okay so this is a two dimensional ps as only one independent variable that is bond length of uh, the diatomic molecules is available okay so let us uh, this uh, was the ideal molecule we have plotted now we will plot the potential energy surface for real molecules so real molecules are almost similar but need to incorporate few other things like zero point energy 
so you know that a molecule cannot be uh, stationary uh, and it cannot stay at its bottom level always it has some zero point energy okay so if we see the uh, vibrational uh, energy level of the reactive molecule then it's look like uh, uh, this plots and this uh, uh, the lowest one is representing the zero point energy or zero point vibrational energy and all this uh, the molecules cannot exist uh, in this bottom level but it actually exists in this uh, minimum level when the no other energies are on the molecule and the occupations will depends on the energy of the systems as well as the uh, gap of these energy levels okay so in general cases we ignore the vibrational energy levels means that all these uh, horizontal lines and we assume that our the uh, molecules are actually raised on the actual potential energy curves okay so next one more point is that uh, other than zb that only at the equilibrium uh, close to the equilibrium bond distance that we only consider the quadratic in, uh, equations that actually plots uh, provide the parabolic plots okay uh, e versus r but for real molecule when we deviate from the equilibrium bond distance then uh, we lost the quadratic plot and the de uh, that is actually the deviation from molecular reality and that actually represented by that we have to incorporate the anharmonicity which is become more prominent uh, from the equilibrium geometry so uh, the real plot will look like uh, that when it's the length is increasing and we are uh, we are a mo uh, little more uh, uh, away from the equilibrium bond distance then what we get we lost the quadratic plot or the harmonic plots and we actually get the anharmonicity okay so uh, the potential energy surface uh, let's see on another example so we uh, uh, have defined the potential energy surface the plot of the energy versus reaction coordinate so here we will uh, and from the potential energy surface the idea of the geometry also can be predicted so you have seen this type of uh, conformational energy diagram of n butane this is n butane this is a, a very uh, this is a very common in uh, general organic chemistry course so you know when this uh, uh, n butanes and these two uh, c3 groups are in anti or 180 degree the energy is minimum when the energy you uh, rotate this uh, dihedral angle and you get the uh, angle is around 240 degree then again energy becomes higher due to the interactions between the cleft interaction between the ch3 and h and again it will become lower because again we are getting one staggered form although we have uh, some interactions are present uh, some more interactions are present than the uh, completely staggered form okay so in this way it can be an infinite surface you can rotate the uh, dihedral angle and it will be repetitive so it will start take the uh, energy of the zero and 360 at the same okay so here reaction coordinates we defined as the dihedral angle and uh, energy minimas we can get the stagger uh, staggered structures so here you can see that 180 degree this this is the global minima and these two are uh, this one and this one you can count the local minima okay and also you can uh, see the uh, uh, maxima of these structures like uh, uh, at the zero degree it is uh, the global maximum whereas uh, some local maximums are there when it's a 180 degree or 240 degree okay so uh, if you go from uh, 0 degree uh, 180 degree to something like uh, 300 degree then what is that you are uh, going from one minima to another minima through a maxima so this maxima is called actually the transient state and we will define later more specifically about that okay So uh, this type of potential energy surface we can easily compute and if we get chance we will compute it in the lab performance. 
okay so at least four of n butanes are uh, not stable uh, molecules these are maximas are not stable so instead they corresponds only to hypothetical structures between n t to gauchy minima okay thus any simple uh, sample of n butane made up of two only two compounds only two distinct compounds uh, that is anti n anti n butane and gauchy n butane the relative abundance of two compo uh, compounds is a function of temperature so if you have two uh, compounds like anti and gauchy which will be uh, the more stable that will be uh, actually you can compute from the boltzmann distributions okay and so that depends on the temperature and the relative energy levels okay so potential energy surface uh, can be more dimensional so here we will uh, see a diamond three dimensional potential energy surface so let's see consider the water molecule where the geometry is defined by two bond lengths and a bond angle these are two bond lengths and one bond angle that's a total three independent variable so if you consider c2 v symmetry means two of each bond lengths are equal then ps uh, you can plot this for triatomic molecules uh, only two uh, 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 only two geometric parameters like uh, two q1 and q2 both are q1 is two uh, which bond length and q2 is bond angle so it can be plotted as a 3d ps so this uh, type of ps uh, will form so you can say uh, it's a plane you will get a three-dimensional plot so here this point is actually uh, you can see the minima of this total surface so we can say this point is actually defining the equilibrium geometry of water molecule and if you see the coordinates of this point you can see the uh, bond length is uh, bond angle is 104.5 degree and bond angle is 0 0.958 angstrom okay so if you consider uh, now asymmetric triatomic molecules like HOCl if you replace 1H by 1Cl then uh, uh, it will lose the C2V symmetry and two bond lengths will not be equal so what you have to define now you have uh, for total three coordinates you will three independent coordinates you will get that's Q1 is one bond length OH and another Q2 is HOCl bond length and also the bond angle okay so you have now uh, four uh, mutually perpendicular axes you need to define this type of uh, potential energy surface that is a four dimensional plot but you can uh, know that our world is three dimensional so we cannot actually plot the four dimensional uh, space uh, we cannot plot we only can imagine that okay so mathematically we can consider so this surface actually we called a hyper surface so okay or the potential energy surface is actually uh, replaced by the idea of potential energy hyper surface okay so without drawing a hyper surface we can define the equations like energy is a function of q1 q2 q3 all these coordinates and as the potential energy surface for hocl where f is the function of to that describes the energy how energy varies with the coordinates like q and treat the hyper surface mathematically okay so for n geometrical parameter we have we can write like e is equal to function of q1 q2 q3 dot dot qn that is n dimensional hyper surface okay so here uh, what we know we have to know more carefully that is the idea of the reaction coordinates so the uh, defining reaction coordinate is very important in context to understand the structural changes during any transformation and to understand the mechanism of chemical reactions okay so if we see a ps for multi step reactions then you have uh, seen this type of potential energy surface for your SN1 reaction. So uh, you have a reactant and then again a maxima and then an intermediate. Then you, if you go further, then again one transition state is observed and finally product. Okay. So this intermediate reactant and products are actually uh, minima, whereas the other two are transition states. Okay so the reaction coordinate implies actually the change of geometric parameters what uh, geometric parameters you are changing during the progress of reaction okay so it can be uh, a bond length or a dihedral angle or anything 
the most uh, discussions that uh, this axis horizontal axis uh, is left quantitatively undefined okay so qualitatively the reaction coordinate represents the progress of reactions because when uh, we have a, a big molecules or many atoms are there so there can be a, through these reaction coordinates many uh, things can be changed and we cannot actually explicitly define the reaction coordinate as that only one bond length or only one bond angle so this can be the coupled of bond length or bond angle or anything okay so reaction coordinate can be bond length bond angle or dihedral angle torsion angle or combination of any of two or all variable okay so the geometric parameters uh, parameter corresponding to the reaction coordinate is usually a composite of several parameters that is bond length angle and dihedral although for same reactions one uh, two may predominate for example the angle of hcn mainly defines the reaction coordinate in uh, the transformation from hcn to hnc that we'll see in the next lecture so thank you for listening